Hey friends, I hope today's lesson is a serious upgrade for you and your music and productions. Today we're going to go over the groove pool, Ableton's groove pool, and what is that? Well, it's up until now likely you've been making your beats exactly on the grid. Everything is just right on those lines, right? Okay, so so if you have a straight feel song, there's nothing wrong with that. Cool, if that's what you want, if that's what you're going for, maybe like a driving, uh, that's a common word used, driving kind of sound. But a lot of the times you want to make a beat that has feel. Uh, some people refer to it as swing or others refer to it as shuffle, okay? Um, this is how you get kind of the, the, the swanky kind of sound, right? Uh, jazzy kind of sound, you know, just it, it, there's more style going on here. So let me play you my completely lifeless and styleless beat right now. Especially the second beat, listen. Right. So both of these beats are gridlocked. They're they're all the samples and, and are hitting exactly on the grid, right? If I zoom in here, you can see even on these sixteenths, we're hitting we're hitting right on that grid marker, that grid line right there, okay? So let's take a look at the groove pool. If I click on this little you can see it looks like water. I just noticed that it looks like water. <laughs> um, you can this is the groove pool, this is where you put your groove. So in order to see them, you can right click in here in this box, browse groove library. Okay. Alternately, you can look at the clip and then see this groove area. If you click on this hot swap, boom, it's the same thing. It just shows you the grooves, right? So look at the groove pool by opening this up, right click, browse groove library. Okay. So now we're in here. So now I've got all these different folders. And here's an interesting thing. If you have the clock playing, just like if you were browsing your samples or something like that, the grooves will actually play. They'll play like what they sound like over the uh, the Q output. So check it out. So we can just listen. There's a groove. Let's listen to a faster one, maybe in 16th. So already, I hope you can hear like what's going on. What this is, is this, it's, it's basically an audio file. It's not exactly on the grid. And there's also some velocity information in there, right? Notes are quieter, notes are louder, right? Okay, so... How does that, how do we use this? So let's go ahead and, and I like the MPC settings. I used to use an MPC when I was younger. Uh, I would turn the swing up when I was using the MPC. And, and so if I look at this track, okay, what I can do is I can drag this groove here into this groove slot in my clip, okay? So with the timing at 100%, listen to the difference now. Right, and then with it off, it's like robotic, right? Let's make it more extreme. In fact, let's use the second beat. Because I'm using 16 swing, it's going to quantize the 16th notes, right? So if you listen to this, right? So I'm gonna choose something a little more extreme, like 65. This is really gonna be apparent. So here is the beat without the swing. Now I'm going to turn it on. Uh. Whoop. <laughs> uh. See what I'm saying? Like that's so now we we've applied this information here. Now this swing here is not very featureful. See, at this point all we're doing is we're just shuffling every other note forward in time. And and so you, maybe you want to check that out. What we can do is we can hit this commit button, okay? Right now, this isn't reflecting any changes on the actual grid, right? All you're seeing is just, you're just seeing it locked to the grid, okay? If I hit commit, watch what happens. So now we've shuffled these second hits forward in time, as well as anything that's on the upbeats, right? Right, we can see it, okay? So let's undo that and let's talk a little bit about this. Now, a lot of these swings will have these numbers associated, okay? What is this number like? Why does it say 50 here, but then 66 here? Well, if you can, if you take a look, look at these notes, these are 16ths. As I move through this, that looks like almost straight, okay? Like the notes are almost 
da 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 da. So 50 would be straight, and then moving on up to 75, we've shifted the upbeats almost on top of the originals, right? So you can take this really, really far, okay? Um, so you can go through all these different grooves, and you can find some other grooves that are really fun. So some of these grooves have velocity, okay? So hip hop three, let's go ahead and check that out on this first beat and listen to the result, okay? So I should turn it off first. So before, and let's turn on the hip hop. Right, so we've got a little bit more uh, action, some swank in there. But what we also have is some velocity information. Look at this. You can see if we listen to this, right? <laughs> right, so what we can do is we can now also turn up, there's some parameters here that we can check out. Uh, one of the parameters is velocity. So if I turn this up, this is going to actually edit these velocities here to reflect what's in the groove. So check it out. Now we got... And before we just had... Just straight. Okay, let's find another example. Let's find something maybe just in the swing folder. So here in this logic folder, we have this, we have this groove with a lot of... Uh, da -da 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 -da, hear that? So now let's let's go ahead and put this on the second beat, okay? I'm going to choose that logic swing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up this velocity so I get a lot of different variants on the velocity hit. So now we've got... Uh, right? And now we've just, we're just pushing and pulling and we're getting all these different feels going on with these beats. You know, this is just the same beat, just trying different grooves out. So... That's that one. It's really fun to just dynamically change these grooves. Okay, so some of these other some of these other controls that we have here, this one is called quantize. So what quantize does is let's say you've recorded a beat and some of your hits are off the grid, okay? These grooves can have the best effect on your drums if the original hits are on the grid. If they're off, this quantize button can quantize the notes before it goes into the the processor, right? Okay, so that's, that's what that's for. We're not even gonna go over that. Um, timing, this will dynamically change how much of this groove we apply to the beat. So at 0%, watch, it's straight. But the velocity is still there. Let's just turn that down too. So this is just the original beat, all right? As I turn this up, listen. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? And back down. Okay, and this next control is the random feature. Okay, so what this does is this humanizes. This is a common term people use. This humanizes the beat, so it scrambles up the hits so, so it can make your beats a little bit more random and, and kind of like how a human drummer would be playing, okay? So it's useful at low settings, I feel like. So now that we have this beat, and you know, this, this, this whole move is trying to eliminate the roboticness of using um, a grid and a drum machine, right? So as I turn this up, uh, check it out. Now, if I turn it up way high, listen to what happens. Your drummer had entirely too much to drink. <laughs> right? Okay, so so that's the groove pool and like how to use it. So let's 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 explore some other things. Alright, so I'm gonna choose Yeah, this logic swing. I feel like it's working out for this beat pretty well. Now, in the second track I have a a Rhodes piano, so check it out. Now I'm going to choose one of these hard swings, this uh, MPC Swing 65. So, so if you look at it, or if you listen to it, check out what's going on. And then I'll turn it off. Now you're probably like, well, you're probably saying, well, I don't hear any anything at all, and that's that's true. You're not going to hear anything if you have notes that don't have sixteenth hits in them, right? So without any sixteenths. 
um, in this situation, we're not going to get any shuffle or groove at all. Okay. So I just wanted to, to show this to you so that you don't get confused. And you can still see, here's, here's another thing. I think people get confused about swing music in general or shuffle music or anything like that. You can still have whole notes and they can be exactly on the grid. It doesn't matter. It still feels right. So listen to this. So this beat is got the 16 swing on it. This has nothing on it and it still works. Listen. Right. So here's a so here's another version of this same riff, but I've got some 16th notes in it. So let me choose this swing 65 on this one and check it out. Right. So without it. Right. So it doesn't really, doesn't really go together when it's straight. Okay. So so that, I just wanted to show that to you so you, so you know. Also, and, and it gets even better, y'all. So here's a guitar, okay? And this is an audio file. I just recorded my guitar. Um, and so this guitar is relatively straight. This is kind of a straight groove, okay? So, but there are definitely a little bit of inconsistencies. I mean, I'm a human. I'm going to make a, a couple rhythmic errors just, just being human. So if I listen to this beat... Okay. It doesn't really work because the guitar is straight. But the rad thing is that it doesn't have to be MIDI to apply these grooves. You can actually choose those grooves over audio. And so check this out. Now we've got... And since I'm stretching audio, you know, it's not, it's not going to be a perfect thing, since I'm stretching the audio, I can kind of mess around with my warping to get a little bit of a better sound. You know, maybe one thing I could do is choose transients just forward and pull this down a little bit and get more. Right? That's kind of fun. So, so you can apply this over audio too. Okay. There's even more rad stuff with grooves. So here's, here's something I did where I just, I, I used my mouth to create a hi-hat beat. So check it out. It's a relatively straightforward beat, okay? But what I can do is, if I have an idea for a groove, and I know how my groove wants to go, I can either play it on a keyboard, on a guitar, on some drums, on a drum pad with my hands on a push. Um, I can do it with, I can also sing it into a microphone. So that's what I've done here. What I can do is I can right click on this clip and extract the groove. So what it'll do is it's going to create one of those grooves out of this audio that I made, right? So now mouth hats <laughs> happens to be a groove. So on this second drum pattern, if we listen to this second drum pattern with nothing on it, it's... Right? If I choose my mouth hats, there isn't much going on in terms of quantization, so check it out. It's still pretty straightforward, but there's a lot going on in the velocity world, all right? So if I turn the velocity up, listen to what's going on now. Right? Now the velocity is moving, and if I hit commit, you can see those velocities changing, right? So this is just a great way to, yet again, unroboticize, if you will, your, your beats, right? Okay, so... Up until now, this has been pretty practical stuff, okay? You can make, I mean, you could just go from here and just really just kind of change the feel of your songs and make really awesome stuff. I'm going to take this stuff a step further. And something that I did recently is I, I made a tune um, with, by subdividing the, the, the beats in the song to make it so that there were polyrhythms going over a bar of music that were not uniform or normal. So you could think of it as a polyrhythm. So in this case, check out this drum rack. What I did is I made these beats where this one's called groove seven, groove nine, groove. <laughs> so groove seven, groove nine, and groove five, right? And if you can see what's going on here, we've got, I'll turn on the click so we can, so we can listen to what's going on here, but uh, that's the click. Now listen to this groove.
So what's going on is every for every four beats, there's actually seven hits here, okay? And there are exactly seven, all right? In this one, there's nine hits for every four beats. And for this one, there's five for every four beats. Or I should say, I'm sorry, <laughs> I should say 10. There's 10 for every four beats, okay? So what on earth is this going to do, man? <laughs> so what I can do now is I can extract this groove. And so, look, I've got velocity information, and I've got everything hitting on exact sevens, okay? So what I can do now is I can go into this, I can extract this, let's just do the seven one. I'm going to extract this groove, okay? And groove seven is now appearing over here, okay? Now, let's listen to this beat prior to doing this, because this is just the coolest thing ever. Okay, now what I'm going to do is add this groove seven. Now watch this, or listen. Oh, that is so awesome, right? Uh, let's try it on these 16th hats. I mean, that is just, I'm all about it. Okay, so let's try the nine. Let's extract this groove. And we'll add that to this guy. I mean, miles of style, right? How cool is that? So you might be wondering. You might be wondering how to do this. And this is really, you know, this looks kind of complicated. And how did you get these to be exact? Well, all you got to do is... I'll just cut these. All you got to do is make however many hits you want to do, okay? Let's say we wanted to make nine, okay? What I would do is I would make exactly one more than I need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if I select them all, notice that there's a warp marker for some reason right before the last one. And so if I want to make nine hits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in four beats, all I have to do is drag this over and it'll snap right there. So look at that, boom. We've got nine hits. And then I can just double this, okay? And let's make a different kind of groove. So we've got, you know, some ramping velocity every so often. In fact, to save time, let's just duplicate that, okay? So now I've got this groove and you can hear what we've got. Okay, so I'm going to extract, well, let's, I'm going to extract this groove. We're going to call this groove 9, 2, okay. And so now I can go back to this beat. And that's my other groove 9, but now I've got groove 9, 2. And what I can do is I can add some velocity. So now I have this velocity information. That's <laughs> crazy nonsense, right? Oh, that's just so cool. You know, and you can add it to these other to these other uh, parts too. So we've got Groove 9, we'll add Groove 9 2 to everything and just <laughs> see what happens. Sometimes you get good results with audio, sometimes you don't, but let's just see. So so it's pretty crazy. You know, what's fun is also it's good to sometimes make anchors. Like if you're making this kind of music, this like broken beat kind of style, it's good to make anchors. So maybe I'll leave the guitar straight and see what happens. So now I've got a 16th swing over over this and then a uh, that weird like nine groove, nine, nine over four in this groove pocket. So as you can see, you can have clips with multiple different kinds of grooves. It seems like swing tends to work 
over this. And another anchor here is this, you know, every every downbeat is going to be exactly the same. So if I play this, this, and this together, we've got three different, you could think of it as having three different grooves at the same time. <laughs> that's just so cool. All right, so that's the groove pool. Go have fun. Uh, there's no reason anymore to make beats that are boring. Like you can use, uh, uh, let's say you don't even want to swing or shuffle your beats. You can use it to change the velocity. You know what I mean? Velocity is also, you know, really important with beats. Just keeping, you know, all your hits exactly the same velocity. It just adds no, no push or pull to your music. It adds no flavor, right? Okay, so if you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, much love, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.